get started. Great. Thanks, Nora. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Ellen Zakowski, and I am a senior program manager at the Polsky Center. Um, and part of my role is managing programs and developing um, educational opportunities for the scientific community. Um, so I am the program manager of the i program, which I'll be speaking about this afternoon. Um, and then I'll have my colleague Nora introduce herself as well. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Nora Mansfield. I'm uh, assistant director uh, over at the Polsky Center of VC programs in the George Schultz Innovation Fund. Um, I work closely with Ellen um, and the team uh, related to the i program uh, and Steve Lehman um, to help manage the Innovation Fund and the Innovation Fund Associates programs. We'll be sharing information on both i and the George Schultz Innovation Fund uh, program and process today. Uh, and Ellen, I'll go ahead and let you get things kicked off. to advance the slide here. There we go. So in terms of who we are and what we do at the Polsky Center, many of you may already be familiar with our work, um, but we are the central hub at the university for entrepreneurship um, and turning ideas into impact. So we work with faculty, staff, students, alumni throughout the university um, to help take their ideas, inventions, technologies, um, and help turn them into products, ventures, um, and licensing to other um, entities. Oops. Just trying to move the slide back. Sorry about that. Got this. Um, so in addition to the university community, we also partner closely with neighborhoods and small businesses on the south side. Um, and our work really falls under four main buckets. Um, so today we'll be talking a lot about the first two buckets, um, education and venture support and funding. Um, so our educational programming ranges from very early stage introductory programs like i to the entrepreneurial process to business concepts. Um, to much more specific programming tailored to individuals and ventures as they kind of progress through their entrepreneurial journey. Um, and we also provide um, support for startups themselves through programs like the New Venture Challenge, um, which many of you may be familiar with. Um, it's one of the premier events of the Polsky Center, and we have five different tracks um, for the New Venture Challenge. Um, the Innovation Fund is also a source um, of funding for science-based startups coming out of the university, which Nora will certainly talk about in a lot more detail. Um, you may also have interacted with our technology commercialization and licensing office. Um, they are the team who work directly with faculty and researchers to take any inventions or discoveries um, coming out of the university labs and helping with IP protection, the patent process, um, helping you navigate the different options that you might have in commercializing your work. Um, so we also work very closely with their team in both of our programs. Um, and then finally, we have a team focused on partnerships and industry relations. Um, maybe you're interested in licensing your work to um, a larger corporation. Um, we bring in different industry partners um, who are eager to work with an academic community. Um, and so that's another way that we try to, to bring resources to, to the university and to all of you. All right, and so for today, um, we are talking, like, a, um, like we mentioned, both about i and the Innovation Fund. Um, some of you may have been through i already, um, but we wanted to incorporate it into the session today um, because the two programs can really act as a pathway um, for technologies that you're interested in commercializing. So i is very much focused on the earlier stage where you're maybe testing out an idea and seeing what market applications there might be for it. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about first. Um, and then um, in the innovation fund component, we'll kind of talk about what you might do when you're further along with that idea. Um, and we'll do that through using a case study of a venture that has gone through a lot of Polsky programming, um, including 
i -Corps and the Innovation Fund, and you may be familiar with ClusterBio, um, which is a venture that came out of Kathy Nagler's lab in the Biological Sciences Division, um, where her research um, was funded by the NIH and focused on food allergies. But as she was conducting her research, discovered that she might have something there um, that could be um, turned into a therapeutic um, or other application to have a much broader impact. Um, so that's when she started interacting with Polsky through our tech transfer office and adding to her team um, with two individuals, Jeffrey Hubble and John Colson from the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering. Um, and as they were continuing to develop the potential uses for their device, um, they did go through i um, to explore some of those potential customer segments and markets. Um, and then Nora will talk a little bit about the rest of their trajectory through Polsky um, to the Innovation Fund. So to drill down a little bit more into i um, the program is funded by the National Science Foundation. So UChicago is one of many universities across the country that receive this funding to um, facilitate the i program. Um, and we really emphasize experiential education in the hopes that by going through our very hands-on learning approach, um, you'll gain insight into the entrepreneurial process, um, learn a little bit more about industries that you're interested in exploring, um, and hopefully get in front of some potential customers. Um, so it is a very team-based program. Um, we do recommend that teams are two to four members. Um, and if you don't currently have a team in place for i I'll speak in a little bit about how we might help facilitate that. Um, the goal of i is to conduct a lot of customer discovery interviews. And again, I'll talk about that in more detail, um, but really getting out of the lab and in front of potential customers to understand their challenges, their needs, the problems they're facing, and how your work might be able to respond to those. Um, and then finally, we are teaching a skill set. Um, and you can also see that in our goals and objectives here. So we're hoping that um, through thinking like scientists, you'll also learn how to create a business. So we teach a replicable process that's similar to the scientific method in a lot of ways in terms of testing your hypotheses um, by getting in front of potential customers and exploring a specific customer segment in the hopes that you'll be able to take this skill set and apply it maybe to the technology you're taking through i -Corps, um, and then also potentially to future research, grant proposals, and other um, technologies that may be coming out of your work. So in terms of the educational component of the program, um, we do host um, i -Corps each quarter um, over seven weeks. Um, and so throughout those seven weeks, we hold four virtual sessions facilitated by an i -Corps instructor. Um, and in those sessions, we are um, discussing the material that we ask um, teams to review through Canvas, which is where all of our curriculum lives. Um, we're having discussions about the conversations teams are having with um, customers through their customer discovery interviews. We're talking about common challenges um, and really using the cohort structure to use one another as resources um, and exploring common challenges and, and the commercialization process in general. Um, we also uh, focus on helping you develop a pitch, um, typically an elevator pitch, which you can use when you're trying to engage with folks for interviews. Um, and then hopefully you'll be able to continue developing that pitch if you're seeking investment at a later point. Um, but that is a huge value add of, of our program. Um, in addition, each team receives a coach who is a Polsky Center staff member. Um, and our coaches are not necessarily industry experts, um, but they are more personal trainers who are there to um, meet you where you are, get a better understanding of your goals um, for your specific technology or idea, um, help you kind of brainstorm how to reach customers, um, craft your interview questions, um, and really be there to support you through the program. Um, by the end of the program, the goal is that you will have conducted at least 30 customer discovery interviews. We certainly have teams that have conducted more than that, um, but that is definitely um, an ambitious but mutable goal um, over the seven weeks um, and a huge component of, of the work that we do. Maybe the slide will advance. <laughs> 
There we go. Um, so in terms of the benefits that i -Corps participants receive, um, so I've talked a lot about the training and the skill set that um, we will support you in developing. Um, you'll get access to the resources at the Polsky Center. In addition to the staff, um, you'll also get access to our networks, mentors, um, and future programming. Um, each team does receive a micro grant as part of their participation in i -Corps, which can be used um, for supporting your customer discovery. So when we were in person, that might mean traveling or conference fees, um, but in the virtual setting, a lot of times um, teams have used that for a LinkedIn premium subscription or um, membership fees to professional associations that would be helpful in broadening your network and connecting with potential customers. Um, and then with that grant funding and participation in i -Corps, um, you receive the designation as being um, a grantee of the NSF. Um, and so that is a huge um, asset if you're looking to explore grant applications to other National Science Foundation programs like SBIR and STTR, um, where you could ultimately access over $1 million in funding to support um, your venture. And in terms of the impact of our program, these are some examples of teams that have come through i -Corps. Cluster Bio is on there that I mentioned earlier. Um, and we highlight these examples to show the, the diversity of the teams that we have come through i -Corps. We support teams throughout the university, um, including the college, you'll see the Harris School on here, um, as well as the national labs like Argonne. Um, we have teams coming um, through the program from the national labs as well. Um, and then we are the only university in Chicago that um, hosts i -Corps. So we also support teams from other institutions um, like UIC that you see here. Um, we've served about 200 teams um, since we started receiving the grant um, in 2014, um, and those teams have raised over $150 million in funding to date, which we're really excited about um, to be able to measure that success. And then after i -Corps, um, the journey certainly doesn't end there. So we definitely work with you to think about what the next steps might be. Um, some of our teams apply to the national i -Corps program, which you um, can continue to uh, conduct customer discovery through that program and access additional funding. Um, and through continued participation with the NSF, um, provide an even clearer pathway potentially to SBIR. Um, and then our additional Polsky Center programming, some of which I've already mentioned um, through the tech transfer office and licensing and patenting opportunities, um, the new venture challenge, the innovation fund that Nora will speak about, and then our newest opportunity is the Compass Accelerator, um, which helps teams develop their business model um, and eventually prepare for um, meetings and um, investors. And then finally, um, regardless of what you do, we're hoping that you would take this skill set um, and apply it to future research um, or other technologies that you might be working on. In terms of the application process, um, we have a kind of broad eligibility criteria since this is a very introductory program. Um, really need an idea. <laughs> um, and that's if that's what you're exploring, great. Um, as long as it is um, based in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math, um, we would consider your application. Um, at least one team member does have to have a university affiliation, whether that's at UChicago um, or another university. And like I mentioned, we also support teams coming out of the national labs. Uh, we do require that at least two teammates commit to attend the sessions. Um, and with that, I'll provide the caveat that we know oftentimes faculty members and PIs cannot commit to attend all four sessions. Um, they're for two hours on Fridays. Um, and we know that that might be a bit of a time commitment that might conflict with your schedules. Um, so that's where we come in to help connect you with team members. Oftentimes postdocs or graduate students will attend the sessions, but it's important for us to have that consistency in terms of who's receiving the content and um, who we can expect each week and for your team to have at least a couple people who are receiving all of the, the curriculum that we offer. And then finally, we really just want to know that you're interested in exploring a market for your work and that you're interested in learning more about the commercialization process. And we partially do that through the application process, um, but we, on the application, on the application, we do have a 
space to identify if you would like help building your team. Um, so we will match you with students, um, either undergraduate or graduate, um, who are interested in working with uh, science-based startups or just exploring commercialization in general, um, and they can help with customer discovery. We also host an event in the fall and the winter called the Collaboratorium. So this fall's event will be virtual um, on Tuesday, September 22nd in the evening. Um, and it's a great way for faculty and researchers to pitch their ideas and their work to an audience of students, um, primarily Booth students, who are interested in learning more about exciting research coming out of the university and how they might be able to bring their business expertise to support you and your endeavors. So we do have spots available to pitch this fall. Um, Melissa Byrne, the Director of Innovation Programs at the Polsky Center, is the best person to contact for that. Um, but we certainly welcome everyone to, to join and, and hear um, what, what work is happening at the university. So I can send a link to that registration after the session as well. And then finally, in terms of the application itself, um, it is due next Friday, September 4th. We do require one application per team. It's pretty straightforward and simple. We have a couple short responses where we just want to know more about your technology or idea, uh, who your teammates are, and what potential use cases you might see for your work. And then we will schedule a time to meet with our Polsky Center team to learn a little bit more about your work in more detail, answer any questions you have, and get a better understanding of availability and, and commitment to the program. The dates for the fall are right here um, in terms of the four virtual sessions over the seven weeks. All right, and at this point, because we've shared a lot of information with you, we did want to just take a brief pause um, and like um, you are already doing, write your questions in the chat um, so we can kind of take um, account of those questions. Some of them may be answered um, in Nora's section of the presentation, and then we'll also allow additional time for Q&A at the end as well. But I'll turn it over to Nora. Thank you, Ellen. Um, again, uh, if you all have questions as it relates to the i portion uh, of this presentation thus far, please feel free to toss them into the chat. Um, we will be sure to address um, all of these questions uh, at the end of the session um, and you know, make sure that we provide answers to your inquiries. Uh, so the George Schultz Innovation Fund, um, in many cases, is the next step after i -Corps. We find that many companies um, will first go through the i process to validate various assumptions, um, to validate, validate different hypotheses they may have and kind of hone in on a market application. And Cluster Bio is a great example of this. Um, Kathy Nagler, um, Dr. Hubble, and um, their colleagues came through both the i process and then came to the Innovation Fund. John Colson actually um, joined as a business lead for Cluster Bio after being an Innovation Fund associate himself. Uh, so he's familiar with the process and able to help carry them through those next stages, leaving them up to the new venture challenge um, and later, um, you know, capital raises to bring Cluster Bio closer to market. So at the point in time that um, teams come to the Innovation Fund, um, there's normally a bit of a business design in place um, and they are trying to finalize the milestones to get to um, the commercialization stage, um, but are not yet at the point of raising their first institutional round, um, though they are beginning to exhaust a lot of the resources available um, through federal funding and various grant um, opportunities. The Innovation Fund is an opportunity to then bring your company through to validate additional hypotheses and help groom you um, to be ready to pitch to venture investors and continue the process to commercialization. So what does the George Schultz Innovation Fund fund? Well, there are a couple categories of research. Basic research is essentially having an idea and working through scientific discovery, normally funded by NSF and NIH um, funding. It then moves um, through technical challenges to get to a more robust state 
um, fueled by grants like SBIR and STTIRs to move towards a novel technology. Um, and at that point, when you're still kind of working through then the commercialization process and kind of validating your customers, uh, we normally see teams coming through the innovation fund process um, and innovation fund dollars are really great to then get you to closer to the commercialization stage and be a bit more palatable for venture funding. So the George Schultz Innovation Fund process. Um, the George Schultz Innovation Fund process is over a 10 week period and there are two parallel tracks happening in tandem. Um, these boxes represent the different stages of the Innovation Fund process and those who are applying, so all of you today would be considered management teams or the researchers who are trying to commercialize their technology. Um, our management teams are paired with Innovation Fund Associates to work through this 10 week process and the hope is that management teams through the 10 week process will work closely with my colleagues Steve Lehman and I um, to continue to um, develop to incubate with the resources of the Innovation Fund and we hope to get you to a point where at the finals you are able to pitch um, similar to a demo day to a panel of investors in our advisory committee. Um, and throughout that 10 week process, you work hand in hand with our innovation fund associates who are doing due diligence on your venture um, and are really helping work alongside you to validate the hypotheses that you have um, to put forth the best pitch possible for our advisory committee members and subsequent um, pitches that you may have and to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and identifying any potential hurdles that may be in your commercialization process and to also make sure that you're setting forth the correct milestones stones um, to help accelerate and, and achieve successes that you're hoping for. Um, week one is the kickoff where we introduce the management teams to their innovation fund associates or what we call the diligence team. Um, there are then three different rounds of pitch deck submissions to our team so that we can work with you to refine your pitch, to refine your deck and make sure that you have all the information needed to pitch on the finals day and to answer any questions that uh, investors, advisory committee members and others may have about your venture. We offer an FDA regulatory training to ensure that both our associates and management teams are fully aware of the regulatory process should this apply to your technology and venture. Uh, and then we also provide the opportunity um, for really valuable feedback midway through the cycle from our advisory committee and steering committee members. Um, this allows for them to ask or kind of have a pre-read of, of what your presentation may be, ask really important questions and make sure that you're validating the correct hypotheses and working towards the right milestones to have both a successful presentation and a greater success in your path to commercialization. Um, we have a presentation training session where we work with both our associates and management teams to make sure that you are ready to present. Um, previously, this was in an in-person context, and now it's to make sure that you're ready to present via Zoom, as we've all grown quite accustomed to doing. And then our finals day is a presentation, um, first of management teams to our advisory committee our team at the Innovation Fund and the general public. Um, and then there's a closed door session where our associates are presenting their due diligence um, to our advisory committee um, and then putting forth their investment recommendation based on the 10 week process. The Innovation Fund Associates, uh, as mentioned, work hand in hand with our team and with management teams. And these are multidisciplinary teams of students through the University of Chicago um, that work in a really collaborative process um, to uh, dive into deals and to um, address any potential hurdles that there may be um, in the commercialization process and make sure that they are bringing forth that information to management teams to work in tandem and, and move you towards commercialization. Um, each deal team uh, is comprised of at least one student from Booth School of Business, um, one student from a law school, and then um, a combination of PhD and postdocs, undergraduates, and potentially a few students from the Harris School of Public Policy. The thought in having these multidisciplinary teams is that it allows all academic areas of the university to come in and have a really robust approach to the due diligence process. Traditionally, we find that our Boost students are the ones who are focused most on the financials, unit economics, um, path to commercialization, et cetera, where the law students are able to come in and speak a bit more to the IP, you know, any regulatory hurdles, uh, while others then are able to, uh, PhDs and postdocs, really dive into the science and understand your technology. 
Teams who are accepted to the Innovation Fund as management teams will work really closely with the associates um, and share, you know, all the details of the technology and make sure that they are aware of what you're working on in detail so that they're able to reach out to, um, you know, various individuals within the space to help validate assumptions that you may have and move you towards, um, a, you know, success in your endeavors. The presentation day. Um, so our presentations will be done fully virtually this fall, as will all of the meetings of the full investment cycle. Um, management teams will have 10 minutes to present, followed by 10 minutes of Q&A. Um, and essentially within these presentations, we ask that you um, describe your technology and paint a picture of success. Um, this is an introduction to external fundraising and an opportunity for you to pitch as though you were pitching to actual venture, venture investors and get feedback from industry experts to really help you refine your pitch um, and prepare for subsequent opportunities of a similar nature. Uh, we mentioned that this is a two-track program, so the diligence presentations are directly following. Again, this is a closed-door session where it is just the associates who are pitching their due diligence findings and their investment recommendation, um, and similarly going through a Q&A process with our advisory committee. Those who um, are suggested for investment and it is then reviewed by um, both our advisory committee and our internal team to determine who will receive investment from the George Schultz Innovation Fund. Those who um, will secure investment as a part of the process would get a safe. Um, and these are similar terms to what teams who receive investment through the New Venture Challenge and other similar programs through the Polsky Center would receive. Um, this safe can be anywhere from $100,000 to $250,000. Um, and these are extremely entrepreneur friendly terms. Um, in most cases, better than, than other market terms, and um, it allows you um, them to convert at the next fundraise. We can certainly go into more detail for those who have questions on the SAFE agreement um, and have quite a bit of information available on um, this on our webpage as well. So the selection process. Um, we hope to see many of you apply to the Innovation Fund, um, if that is the step that you're ready for. If not, we certainly suggest the i to, you know, help set you up for success um, to go through the pathway of commercialization with resources from the Polsky Center. Um, but many people have questions of what a successful application looks like. Um, we're looking for committed teams um, with dedicated technology and business founders um, who are really ready to dive into market application and work through the commercialization practice, um, who are willing to work hand in hand with our diligence teams um, to accelerate your venture and move you towards um, a path to commercialization. We ask that you have a couple significant technical milestones that have been achieved. Um, for example, if you are applying with a drug, um, that there are lead candidates um, that you have identified or nearly identified with a device that you have an initial prototype completed, et cetera. Um, and we want to see that this technology is demonstra demonstratively better or different than what's already available on the market. Um, the value proposition of the technology has been validated within customers, uh, and the work to be funded will likely lead to outside, outside funding customers or other engagements. So we essentially want to see that you um, have a bit of traction and that our investment will help accelerate your success. Uh, application best practices. We want to make sure um, in your application that you make the problem obvious and tangible. Each applicant will be asked to demonstrate both the problem that they are um, working to face and the solution that they've outlined. Um, we know that the research and the technology that you are working on is very close to your day to day and um, we understand that there's a lot of um, nuance to this science that you're working on and, and most likely a lot of technical language or what we call industry industry jargon. Um, you're welcome to attach various papers and additional attachments that help illustrate your technology, but we ask that you minimize the technical or industry jargon so that we can really um, understand and level set. Um, and we're certainly happy to dive into the details of the technology at a later point, but please do, um, you know, make your descriptions accessible, thinking as though you are approaching us as a customer who um, may not be as familiar with the science as you are, um, but certainly willing to kind of get into it and, and figure it out with you. 
uh, and again, please utilize attachments. Um, this provides really powerful data and examples to our team to better understand your technology, as previously mentioned, um, and to understand what milestones you have achieved and the exact um, you know, place that you are at in your journey. The key dates. Um, the application is open. Uh, we are currently in our info session now, and the application deadline for the George Schultz Innovation Fall Cycle would be on September 10th at 10 a.m. Um, we will go through a review process of all applications and notify teams selected to move forward by September 18th, very quickly making introductions to your due diligence team um, and beginning our investment cycle by the first week of October. Those who are moving forward in the process will pitch their final presentation um, at the Innovation Fund Finals on Thursday, November 19th. Again, this will be fully virtual, but we will guide you through the process over that 10 week period to make sure that you're prepared to do so and have a really strong presentation, both for this finals event, but one that you can then bring forth in later fundraising. So we encourage you to apply uh, either to the i program or the George Schultz Innovation Fund, um, dependent on what stage you are at and what may be the best fit. Um, for the George Schultz Innovation Fund, we will accept anywhere from three to five uh, management teams to the fall cycle, uh, again, to work with us and our Innovation Fund Associates over that 10-week period. Um, should you not be accepted to the fall cycle of the Innovation Fund, we certainly would love to keep in touch and we'll make sure that we either suggest other resources that will help accelerate your success for later application and hopefully later acceptance into the fund, or make you aware of other resources that may be appropriate to help accelerate your success. Um, we have bit.ly links listed here uh, for these applications. Um, the Innovation Fund application is through a platform called Unoodle. Um, when you put in this link, you'll be prompted to create an account through Unoodle uh, and complete your application from there. You are able to complete your application in various stages and your progress will be saved. Um, and if we see that you start an application um, and it's not quite finished or has not yet been submitted by the deadline, um, we'll be monitoring and following up with those who have outstanding applications. But please do um, ensure that your application is submitted um, by 10 a.m. on the 10th. Uh, so again, we'll take a brief pause, a lot of information. We welcome you to start putting in some questions in the chat uh, and we can go ahead and start going through a few of these previously submitted in the i portion. Okay, we have one question here. Is there a limit to how many times you can apply to i -Corps? So there is technically not a limit. Um, however, you would have to be entering i in a very different venture than you initially went through i with or have a very compelling reason for why you would need to conduct customer discovery again through i and maybe not just independently if you've already had that training. Um, so it would be something that we would probably have to just kind of touch base with you on and learn a little bit more about the specific idea or technology that you wanna take through the program. And then for um, you Chicago students who want to get involved, um, I can be a contact and then work on connecting you to other individuals on our team. Um, so I can put my email address in the chat for that. All right, and for those who are interested in becoming Innovation Fund Associates, we will have separate info sessions on this part of the program the first week of October. I suggest that you certainly uh, register for one of those, but to, to answer your question quickly, Innovation Fund Associates are committed to their cohort and to the George Schultz Innovation Fund for a full calendar year. Um, we have recruitment that starts in the fall. Um, associates are accepted prior to the start of the winter quarter. Um, over the winter quarter, they will um, go through um, a training program to ensure that students from all academic disciplines are uh, have an equal foundation into the fundamentals of due diligence for science-based ventures um, and some frameworks that we suggest for due diligence for these sorts of ventures as well. Then the um, investment cycles that associates will actively be a part of are um, first in the spring quarter. There's no commitment over the summer, so any internships that you may have or other commitments, um, your summer is yours. And then they'll have their final um, 
commitment to the Innovation Fund uh, in the fall quarter of the coming year. So think of it as a full calendar year rather than academic year commitment. Um, and each program I, I know uh, across the university um, you know, has different durations. So, so long as you are able to commit for a full calendar year, you, you would be eligible. Um, okay, let's see. The Innovation Fund Associate application will be due in mid-October. Again, additional information will need, be made available um, as it relates to that portion of the program in a later date. I suggest um, keeping an eye on the Polsky Center website and our events page as well. Um, we're working with our marketing team to make sure that all of the relevant dates and deadlines, info sessions, et cetera, are uploaded to the web page uh, prior to the launch of the fall quarter. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, I'd also suggest registering for the Polsky Center Weekly 10 a newsletter that is available for um, registration or signing up for at the bottom of the homepage of the Polsky Center website where you're able to put in um, your name and email address and receive a uh, email that outlines 10 of the best updates on Polsky Center affiliated companies um, every Friday afternoon. The bottom portion then features an, uh, a little bit of an overview on upcoming events for the following week. Um, we will certainly be sharing both the slides and this recording with all those who have registered. Um, so for those of you who are interested in that, um, please stay tuned for that email and we'll make sure that it comes from both Ellen and myself. So should you have any targeted questions about these programs that you're able to email us directly, either to set up additional time to chat through um, your personal situation, your venture, and kind of figuring out the right fit of program, or if you have questions related to uh, individual application process. Um, yes, another question is, um, is a U Chicago affiliation required for the George, George Schultz Innovation Fund program? Um, yes, so a team that is participating in the George Schultz Innovation Fund has a similar eligibility requirement to that of i uh, We require that there either be a team lead member um, who is affiliated with the university, um, a researcher of the university, or someone affiliated with one of the national labs. So that too is a requirement of the i program. Uh, another question is, does acceptance into the George Schultz Innovation Fund program guarantee some level of funding? Um, it does not. What it does guarantee is that you have access to the associates over the 10 week period um, to, you know, put forth the due diligence on your venture. And that information is very valuable. That information will prepare you to answer some tough questions from later investors. Um, and you'll have access to all of their due diligence to um, help you uh, accelerate your success and make sure that you are aware of any um, you know, potential hurdles that your venture may face, um, other competitors in the landscape, um, milestones that would be needed um, for later stage investment, et cetera. So though not every team will um, secure investing from the Innovation Fund, you will have access to that due diligence um, which I would say is completely invaluable. Um, we typically will invest in between one and two teams in the innovation fund process at the end of each cycle. Um, can one be a part after graduating as my program ends in the spring quarter? I, um, so that, uh, I think we would need a little bit more detail as to if you were hoping to come through from um, if you're bringing a venture through or if this isn't related to in relation to the Innovation Fund Associates program. Um, so please feel free to respond to our outreach with the slides and recording uh, and we can answer that in a bit more detail. For those of you who are looking to um, you know, move forward in the patenting process or disclose your IP. Um, should that be a step that you are at, we suggest that you reach out to the Polsky Center Tech Commercialization Office. Um, they will have um, various contacts within their office who can help guide you in the right direction, make sure that you're connected to the proper relationship manager within their unit um, and help you map out the next steps for that process. So the Polsky Center Tech Commercialization team uh, is certainly a resource and we can um, add some of that information in our outreach following this session as well. Are there any other questions? Um, feel free to toss them in the chat or if you wanna use the raise hand function, we're happy to call on folks individually. Um, 
it's a lot of information coming at you, we know, um, and some fast approaching deadlines. But once again, we are more than happy to connect with anyone individually to discuss in more detail, um, whether it be uh, related to um, the i program, the Innovation Fund program, or other resources um, to support STEM uh, science-based ventures uh, coming through the University of Chicago. Um, there are no shortage of programs through the Polsky Center. So if either of these does not seem like the right fit for you and your team, again, please feel free to reach out to either Ellen or myself and we will make sure that we can help guide you in the right direction and point you to the right resources. Seems to be all the questions. Thank you so much, everyone. We uh, hope you enjoyed this information and look forward to um, hopefully reading many of your applications um, and getting to know you all either in person or over Zoom um, in the near future. Thank you all. We really appreciate the time.